Okay, so um, I think we're going to start. So, sorry for running a few minutes late, just getting everything ready. Uh, my name's Steve Harley. I am the pre-sales director here at ACS. Um, and uh, I'm joined here today by Jamie Evans and Jessica Compton from uh, Pragmatic. Um, today's session, uh, Jamie's going to take us through some of the integrations that are available between Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Teams. Uh, and see how these two tools can really work together to uh, add some real value uh, to your organization and Teams has been a fantastic tool for us at ACS and, and I'm sure many of you on the um, on the call as well uh, and really it's how do we take it to that next step and really make it sing and there's some of the advantages of having um, Microsoft uh, delivering both the CRM uh, as well as uh, well as your collaboration suite. Um, during the course of the session, if you have any questions, the Q and A's are open. What we will do is we will um, add, add them. Um, if you can add any questions there, we'll address them at the end and try and just go through as many as we can. So if anything uh, strikes you want to ask more about, please do uh, hit the Q and A se um, section and, uh, and ask those questions and uh, we'll pick those up at the end. And so really without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to you, Jamie. Thanks, Stephen. Hello, everyone. Good morning and um, welcome to this webinar where we're going to be going through the Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Teams integration. So although Stephen has introduced me this uh, a little bit about myself, my name is Jamie Evans. I am the technical director at Pragmatic Solutions. We are a Microsoft Dynamics 365 partner and we uh, specialize in designing and developing bespoke CRM systems and custom databases. With all of our solutions uh, and systems leveraging Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. The agenda for today, I'm going to give a brief introduction into what is Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform, and likewise, in a, a short overview into Microsoft Teams, but I'm sure a lot of you on the call are aware of what Microsoft Teams is. And then we're going to go into a demo, which will be uh, highlighting some of the key features of the integration, but we'll also be discussing some business scenarios where we believe the integration works really well to, to aid that collaboration between different departments. Okay, so what is Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform? So if you've, if you've heard of Dynamics 365 before, it might be in the capacity of uh, on the CRM side, but also Dynamics um, spreads across the range of business applications also into finance and operations so you may have been aware of it working with business central or, or back in the day being being nav um, but for this particular um, webinar we're going to be focusing around the, the crm side and it's what uh, microsoft called the customer engagement platform and within that platform there are five purpose-built applications um, by microsoft there's sales which uh, helps sales teams manage leads nurture opportunities raise quotes and orders, for example. We have customer service, which is for customer service departments and call centers to manage incidents and cases to resolution. You have field service, which is for companies running field service operations to help them manage work orders and dispatch engineers into the field. We have marketing, which is fairly self-explanatory, but it's marketing automation software uh, to help uh, marketing departments and teams with their activities. And then finally, we have project service automation, which is um, to support companies who operate and offer project services such as um, construction companies and professional services organizations. But what you also get with Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform is the ability to build on top of those applications to make them bespoke for a particular industry or actually a particular individual business, if it might be that. Um, uh, if particular in individual needs and we do that by using the tools within the power platform so we have the three main applications within that which is power apps power automate and power bi so if we start on the right hand side with power apps we have um power apps is kind of a best described as like a business application framework where, where we can build and customize on top of the existing applications or we can build um, from scratch some standalone um, custom databases and also even again extend into the mobile applications as well and then with Power Automate this is a comprehensive workflow engine to drive automation uh, 
within those business applications for automating processes and workflows. And then finally, we have Power BI, which is a business intelligence suite um, where we can use connect the data that's within the customer engagement platform to visualize that data and get insights into the data that is sitting within Dynamics 365. And then a little bit about Microsoft Teams, as I said, you're probably all aware of it, of it and then obviously it's getting more of a, more traction these days because of COVID-19, but if you're not aware of it, a little brief introduction, it is a Teams is a chat-based collaboration tool by Microsoft that provides remote teams and um, disparate teams with the ability to be able to collaborate and share information via a common space, which is called a channel, which I'll explain and you'll see within the demo. Um, it provides features to be able to collaborate on documentation, one-to-one -one chat, team chat, video calls, for example. And then there's of course integrations into the other Microsoft products, which are and um, some of them highlighted there on the right hand side where you have planner around task management, Microsoft forms for, you know, form submitting or surveys, uh, OneNote for the OneNotes, etc. And of course, Microsoft Dynamics 365, which we'll be uh, focusing on in this particular webinar. During the demonstration, I'll be focusing on the three scenario, business scenarios. It's going to be around collaboration around sales opportunities. I'm going to show it an example around uh, how you could use it for account management and then a non sales related one is going to be around um, customer service around the collaboration around the high priority case that needs to be resolved. And then also at the end of the demo, we'll be um, showing some additional features which we have the Microsoft, um, the Dynamics 365 bot, which is actually an app within Microsoft Teams where you can you can um, query and 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 query the database and search the Dynamics database and get the results from Dynamics within Microsoft Teams. Um, so that's a nice feature as well that might drive some value uh, to your organizations. OK, so I'm going to go into the demo now. I'm going to start out in Microsoft Teams. So a little this is the desktop app of Teams. Um, and what we're going to focus on at the start is the opportunity is the scenario around a um, uh, working or collaborating around an opportunity. So for this scenario, the opportunity, the company is going to be a company who specializing in uh, doing office and commercial property fit outs and also provide furniture and equipment for those companies as well. And what I've done here is I've created a team called UK South Opportunity. So that is uh, actually creating a team for a particular region. Um, but likewise, that could be for a one a one off opportunity. If you had a large opportunity, you could actually create the whole uh, a team for the whole um, opportunity. If it runs <coughs> over you know a long period of time, that could also be a good fit here. But this is one where I've actually created it for a region and a, and a team. Um, and so every team member will have access to every sorry, sales person will have access to that team, but also other departments can have access. So it's where they can loop in or collaborate with other departments such as design and the other and the field engineers or the engineering team, for example. So what you have here overall team, but then we have some channels underneath there and it's the channels is where we have where we start to uh, communicate on um, and there is a uh, in this in this example, there is one channel per opportunity. What I'll do um, now is I'll switch over to Dynamics 365 um, and we'll go and show how the collaboration works or the, the integration works. So I'm in Dynamics 365. I'm in what's called the sales hub. So it's the sales application. And then we have uh, we're in the opportunity and you can see here we have some UK South opportunities as a view. I'm going to click into this particular opportunity here. And there are um, some information that's been filled out, a little bit of information about what it is, who's the account, it's for Warwick District Council, the contact, et cetera. We have some other information that's been populated by the salesperson, uh, a description, and then some notes here um, around, you know, emails that have been sent, or sorry, timeline, emails that have been sent, tasks and notes, et cetera, to get a bit of a background of what's been going on in that opportunity. But at this moment in time, the salesperson will wants to collaborate with other departments because they want the client wants to know um, some ideas around times, time scales and costs. 
So at this point, the say, you know, predominantly the salesperson will be working within the CRM, especially around opportunities. But at this moment in time, they want to start, you know, collaborating, get some information from the other teams, other, other members of other departments. So what we want to do here is we're going to establish a connection to Microsoft Teams and create a channel for this opportunity. So we can click on the collaborate button here in the in the uh, in the top menu bar. We click collaborate and then we get a pop up to get started. So I click on get started now and what's going on now is it's going to retrieve the teams that I have already access to as a user. Now I can see here that we have several teams here, but I have this one called UK South Opportunities. So I'm going to click that particular team there and then click next. And then it goes to way and retrieves um, some of the channels. Um, there is a little bit of a, a bug there with my system anyway. I need to do it the second time and then it works straight away. Um, hopefully you guys don't experience that, but it's something I've just noticed recently. Um, so we get a list of the channels that are currently there. I could add this opportunity to a, an existing channel, but for this scenario, I'm going to create a new channel. So I'm going to create it and get asked me to then uh, give a name. So I'm going to call it um, Warwick um district and then it's going to be office block fit out so there's a little bit of information there and i'll click next and then it comes back with some of the members that i can add it to but i'm actually just going to click finish here now and when i click finish you can see here it's going to uh, start up the connection it says this could take a few minutes but normally it only takes a few seconds right on cue and then we um, go to get a pop up here and then we open up Microsoft Teams. And then that comes back to the uh, desktop app of Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> For your information as well, there's also a web, uh, a web app with Microsoft Teams to use it in a browser. But this, this demo is here showing it in the, in the desktop application. And now what you can see here is it's created a new channel here for that particular opportunity. Um, you get the standard tabs in there, which are posts and files, which I'll explain in, in a minute. But what you get here is the actual record within Dynamics shown uh, or pinned at the top here and the actual tab. Um, the record is appeared in it's um, embedded into the channel here. So I can see that it's successfully um, synchronized. And now I have the Dynamics record here visible in in teams now i can work with this particular record if i have access as a user i can actually do my normal job so if i have a uh, access to be able to edit this particular record i could add new new notes i could move it on to the next stage in the process for example so you can really work with it as you were working with it in in dynamics um, and then if i had read only access i as a user i'd be able to see the record if i didn't have any access to dynamics then i wouldn't be able to see this particular record. Um, so what you get here is the, is, is, the, is the record that you can work with, set all the features and functionalities are there. But one of the real good uh, the benefits around having this record pinned here is this little chat option here. So you have um, uh, the tab here in the top right hand corner. If I was to click it, I can actually start a conversation with other people in this team around this particular record. So the person, when they get the notification that, the, that someone is asking them a question, they can go onto the channel, but they straight away they're seeing the opportunity that's related to it and any information about that opportunity. So, for example, I might say um, I might say uh, to Daniel. I could say in here uh, at Daniel. For example, um, I've got some pre pasted stuff here. Please take a look at the documents on this opportunity and give some guidelines around time scales for the delivery, for example. So that then gets sent and Daniel will then get notified. If, if, he's, if he's on his um, if he's on his um, on his desktop or laptop, he get notified by the little pop up there. But if he there is also a very strong uh, mobile app for Microsoft Teams as well. So if he's on the road or you know, you know, it's remote somewhere, then he can actually um, reply and see that information on his mobile app as well. But what Daniel can do then, uh, he's, he can reply and can get a conversation going there, or we can also, also loop in other members of the team if we need to get some answers to, to questions. What you can also do as well down the bottom here is attach some documents, so you can start collaborating around documents. So for example, if I was to um, come back here and and um, add that in there. I can say upload from my computer um, and I'll just upload this, for example, as a, a test image. 
and then say, uh, for example, please have a look at this spec. Just try that again. Click open. And then I'll say, uh, please uh, have a look at this example. And then I'll click send. And then that puts the, uh, that could be a document, it could be an image, it could, um, whatever attachment it might be. In this case, it's just a, a um, an image, but that could be a document there. So you can have a back and forth conversation around this particular opportunity and looping other other departments. So it's the ease of getting the access and the quickly the quick access of chatting using the chat features to be able to get answers to things quickly. But you get the visibility of working with the dynamics record as well. Um, what you then also get is that there is synchronization between the files within dynamics and the files within the teams channel. So for those of you who've used Dynamics 365 uh, for sales before or the, or the customer engagement platform and are aware of the SharePoint integration. When, there's, when you establish a SharePoint integration to Dynamics, it creates a, a document library for that. The same way as when you integrate into Teams, it creates a separate document library for, for the channel. So for example, now there is files within the, um, that particular um, uh, picture is uploaded as a file. In the file section, if I go back to Dynamics and then go to the file section on the tab and just click that there, you'll then see the the same image there as well in the list. So it's synchronizing those two document libraries. So whatever application I'm in, I get access to those documents and everyone has that ease of access to the information that's needed. What we also have on here is on the post channel is that we get all of the correspondence that's been going on in the different tabs, you get a, um, a kind of summary of it here in the overall conversation channel, uh, which is called posts. Obviously, I've showed you the, the files. Um, Wiki is something that comes as default, but we normally remove that unless you want to use the, uh, the um, sort of Wiki features. Um, but some also other, uh, other add-ons that we, we tend to, to see clients using and also we use internally ourselves is that we can add extra tabs in here where we loop into or connect to other Microsoft uh, products. A good one is Planner. So if it is a large opportunity, for example, you might want to start to divide tasks for different individual people and departments around getting information back around a particular opportunity. One note is also a good, a good in, um, add in there as well. If you've got large amounts of notes uh, around a particular opportunity or drawings or diagrams that you've been sketched up. Um, that is a good um, one there. So everybody has access to that information. And then of course we have Dynamics 365 here as well. So this is the other this is the other way to to integrate into Dynamics 365. So I've shown you the way to go from Dynamics 365 and create the channel automatically. But what I can also do here is actually click on Dynamics 365 and there is another way of bringing those records into here. I mean, you also what you also get is a way of pinning certain views in here as well. So the the, the way I've showed you in Dynamics 365 is is on certain that collaborate button is on only on certain records. But if you have some what custom records or um, yeah, so some custom records that have been built, um, they you can also integrate this way to those particular those particular records. But what you can also do as well is to go on and select some of the views. So for example, if I was to go on here and I was to select um, the account and then say here to say, I'll say one of my, my, my key accounts, for example, or actually I'll pick local authorities and click save there. What happens then is it adds another tab here to it. So I can have multiple tabs from Dynamics, but it is a view of certain, um, this is a view of, um, of a list of local authorities, which is a saved view in Dynamics there. So there are actually two ways of integrating into it. One that comes from Dynamics and then the other way you can do it from in, within Teams itself. What you can also do as well is that when you're on a particular tab, you can use the, um, the button here to go to website. If you click that, it just shoots and takes you straight through to the corresponding record within Dynamics. And there we go when that loads and we straight through working with that particular opportunity there. If I jump back into into teams now, um, that was one scenario where I've shown 
you know, working on a, a particular um, channel for a particular opportunity and then collaborating with uh, other people within a, um, a department, other departments. But you could also have another scenario where you might have your uh, a team for my key accounts, for example. So if I click on there, we then have a, um, a channel, which is a general one, which is a default that comes in. And then we have uh, again, we have the posts and the files for that particular channel. But again, we could have the the um, the views there where we can see the key accounts and obviously get access to those information. So I could click through to Warwick District Council, for example, and I'm then sort of seeing all the rec, all the information there. So that's just another way that you could have, um, you know, a team there for an individual person or a, a team that was responsible for those accounts where they have the 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 access to that information within Teams and not having to navigate over to Dynamics to, to, to access some of the key information there. It might be to get uh, information around the timeline. It might be to see some of the current opportunities there, or it might be some of the files that are uploaded to that particular, um, that particular um, account. The other um, scenario around account management could be that you may even have a team for a particular um, a customer. It could be a, a large customer. It could be one of your main customers where a lot of your your orders are coming from. Um, so you could even structure in it a way to actually have um, a team for a particular customer. And this really depends on if you go with a, a region or, or key accounts or a, a, a team for a customer or even like I mentioned earlier, a team for an actual an individual opportunity if it's if it needs uh, if it's going to be open for a long time and needs a lot of collaboration and tasks around it. Um, it, it really depends on on you as an as, as an organization, how you structure these teams and how you um, how you work with teams and channels. But this is just to show you a, a couple of the scenarios that can could work around sales opportunities and, and account management. So we have Contoso here, which is a generic Microsoft company. Um, and we have, for example, if I click on the the um, the general one here, we have the Contoso account uh, record pinned here, um, where again, we get access to that information. I might need to, I might be in a, 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 a sales manager who wants to speak to one of their consultants around this particular account or the phone call they've just had with them, etc. So I get the visibility to the timeline, but I can also start to chat with other people in the departments around that particular account. And then you could then extend that to have separate channels. There might be uh, an ongoing proposal for that particular client or an opportunity that is um, a large opportunity for that client as well. And you can then create separate channels within that particular team. You also, when you when you decide on how to structure this, it also depends on, I guess, security uh, and who has access to what within your organisation. So, for example, when you have one key account, you can only you can invite the people who have um, to the team who uh, who are relevant for that particular account. Whereas in this example, the the whole UK sales team will have access to all the opportunities. So it really depends on how you want to structure it. Another option is to actually have a uh, a team per account manager or a team per um, sales consultant to for that person to only and the sales manager of that person to only have access to that team and only see the channels and the opportunities that they're working on individually. OK, so that was the um, sales uh, example. Um, we have the opportunities and then we have the key account examples here. I'm going to move on to another example which is related to more to customer service. So I'm going to switch back to Dynamics 365 and I'm actually going to switch the app over to the customer service hub where um, we have what's called cases. Now there is a case here in the list which is a high priority case, uh, a roof system failure. So just load that record. And like, like, likewise with the the sales opportunity, excuse me, <coughs> the sales opportunity. <coughs> we, um, <coughs> this is a high priority case that needs to be escalated uh, to a manager or another department, and we need to be able to collaborate on it. So the, the customer service representative is working on this case, but they need to get some collaboration around it. <coughs> this scenario we're talking about is a, a priority one case, but it could be a scenario where 
they had to get some collaboration or some information from an engineer about a particular case. So we have the option here again to click on the collaborate button in the ribbon. We click, and we get started. And then it goes again and loads the teams that I have access to. And we have this chat, this team called P1 cases. This is priority one cases. So I click on that particular uh, team. I click next and it will then display the channel list. If I go back and do it for the second time. It pulls back the channels. Um, I can add it again to a current channel or I can create a new channel in the list here. So I click on the create the new channel and I'll say uh, roof system. Failure. P1 priority one case, so I'll click on next and then I'll click finish on here. And again, it's just going to establish that connection. The same process. It takes uh, a couple of seconds to establish the connection. You get a pop up and then you click on open Microsoft Teams and then we're back into Microsoft Teams in the desktop app. Then what we have here, if we go back into open up the P1 cases, we then have another channel for that particular case. So exactly the same sort of approaches and opportunities, but we're actually collaborating around a particular case here. And again, I can start a conversation with uh, with with Daniel. Daniel's going to be busy um, saying, please take a look at this. At this case. Um, and let me know. Your thoughts, for example. We go and we send that and it might be you know Daniel can come on here straight away you can see what the customer service representative wants um, and then he's straight into the dynamics record there so again just saving that time not having to move between applications but able and also to be able to see all the information there while he's having a chat uh, with the customer service representative um, likewise the files will get synchronized you have a, a whole document library there to exchange any files around that particular case. Um, but it's very similar, similar functionality that we've shown there. I think the real value comes in around the having the doc, the, the uh, record pinned as a tab in Teams and also that chat feature, the back and forth around that particular or chat. Um, and also if you loop somebody else into the conversation, when they go into the post section, they can get a history of everything that's been discussed around that particular case as well. So it's a, it's also good from the perspective that um, if somebody comes on and, and is like I said, is introduced into this case at a later stage and not having to ask people to get uh, filled in around what's been going on, they have all of that as a, in a timeline there that they can get um, access to that information. OK, and the last thing I wanted to show you um, before we go on to the Q&A is actually what's called the um, it's the Dynamics 365 app, which is embedded uh, into uh, Teams. Now, if you click the three little dots, I've pinned it out the side here, but if you haven't done that before, you can go to the three dots and there'll be an app called uh, Dynamics 365 and you can click. You can right click on it and then pin it to the side menu here. So if I click on Dynamics 365 now, it now takes me through to a separate area, which is its own dedicated app for Dynamics 365. Um, I'll show you some of the features in a second, but you know, if you can go to the <clears throat> the setup here into settings and you if you're working with multiple organizations, you can pick which organization it is related to. This is connected to our demo environment. And then if you run multiple apps within Dynamics 365 as well, you can also um, you can also pick certain apps here. So we've got project service, for example, or customer service. But in this case, we're doing the sales hub scenario. <clears throat> and then we have the My Dashboard tab as well, which is basically <clears throat> gives you the capability to work with Dynamics like you would in a mobile form or using the tablet app for Dynamics 365. So it's not the, exactly the same interface as you'd work with in the desktop version, but you can work with the application here. So I can go through and see uh, accounts, for example, and then go and see start to work with Dynamics here. Um, so I go to my key accounts. That's the same view there. I can go through and click down into the particular record and then go back and back and forth example, for, for example, to go back to where I was in the process. You can really work with with Dynamics there. So again, just not having to switch between applications and, and work with Dynamics in the web in the web browser. It's embedded into into Teams. Um, you also get access to um, dashboards as well, so you can see a quick level there. You can see 
uh, your dashboard, your high level information, could even be a Power BI dashboard as well uh, that is pinned within Dynamics where you get some more insights into some more, um, you know, insights into the data. And then I could go and open up Power BI there if I wanted to go and check out the data behind those top level figures, for example. But let me show you some of the uh, chat features. Um, we have, um, it's basically a, a, a bot that will go off and query the Dynamics database. So for example, if I say search Warwick uh, district, need to make sure I spell this correctly. Um, district example it will go away and it will go and return the results that it finds for Warwick district comes back you can see it's saying dynamics 365 is typing it will come back here and it said I've found an account I found the people the contact records of the people that work there and there's also five opportunities that are open for Warwick district in there so if I click on Warwick district it then goes away and, and queries it again and it comes back and it gives me some information about you know what's their address who the account manager is annual revenue what type of account they are they're a local authority the website for example and that can be customized to have whatever fields you want in there and then I also get the option to show contacts for that particular um, organization and then also show opportunities as well so for example if I click on the show contacts it will go there again a query again and come back with the four contacts so if i hit on hit michelle matthews there i then get the information from michelle matthews the email address the job title etc the phone number um, and then i can see the opportunities that are related to michelle or i could just go and open up michelle's record in in dynamics and jump straight through to it to get some more information about michelle so it's a good way of being able to quickly query the dynamics database with again without having to switch over to dynamics you'd be working within teams a lot you can go to there quickly search for a particular record and it presents what it finds from the dynamics database okay so that was the last thing i wanted to show you around the dynamics and teams integration um i think we'll now hand over back over to Stephen, where we will go over the uh q a if there's been any questions um uh, during that particular session. Thank you, Jamie. Um, fascinating stuff. Um, I haven't got any questions at the moment. If you if you have got questions, if you uh, wave your mouse around, you should be able to uh, bring up the little menu and you'll see the uh, Q&A uh, icon there. You may need to hit the uh, three dots button for more actions and, and go into it if it's if it's hidden away from you. No, so far. We'll give him a, give everybody a few more moments just in case they're typing away. No, we've no questions, Jamie. By the looks of it, um, okay. I'm sure. If, I'm sure if anybody does have a question or wants to uh, pick up a, a conversation. Uh, with Jamie or with ACS, um, then of course, you know, um, uh, you know, do reach out after this. Um, Jamie's details are there for you all uh, in the meantime. No, nothing. I think uh, if you've knocked it out of the park there, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> OK. No worries. Well, look. Thank you everybody for joining us. Um, it's been uh, been really useful. I um, hope that you uh, uh, have a great day today uh, and stay safe. Um, thank you very much. Thanks guys.